So welcome back guys to Kids Coding Playground. Today we'll be doing a Christmas platformer in Scratch. Um, we decided to do a Christmas platformer because Christmas is coming up soon. And it's basically a generic platformer. Use the arrow keys to move around. You use the arrow keys or the WASD. And then you jump over obstacles um, to prevent dying. And you want to get to the green flag to advance to the next level. Okay, and then before we start, we will want to learn these following concepts in Scratch. Variables, broadcasting messages, custom blocks, operators, cloning, and platformer logic. And then we have two people we want to give a shout out to. These two people gave us a suggestion to make a Christmas platformer in Scratch because Christmas is coming up. This uh, first person gave us the idea first. So big thanks to both of you for giving us the idea for making a Christmas platformer. So before we start, please like, share, and subscribe. Okay, now let's move on to the tutorial. Okay, so now we have our project, so we got a new project. So we're gonna first rename our project. So let's name it Christmas Plat Platformer. So first we're gonna delete the scratch cat. We'll not need that. So we're gonna upload some sprites from our backpack. And we have these sprites in the Google Drive in the description below. So you can just download them in the description. So we're gonna upload them. So we have the green flag. We have the snow, like the snow effect. We have the ground. So I already have all the costumes for the ground, like right here. We'll send, we'll put a couple of them inside the Google Drive. Um, so yeah, this is like the ground. And then we'll get the spikes. We'll have this in the Google Drive. You can draw your own as well if you want. It's not that hard to draw. And then we have the player, the actual player, main character. So the player and main character are different. So you can name this the animated character, like we taught inside the Among Us platform. Okay, animated character. And this is the main character. So like this thing follows this thing. And then we have the trampoline which is like the bounce pad thing. Like we have eight costumes for it. It's in the description as well. Okay, so now we have all our sprites. Let's get working on to the code. And before we work on the code, let's work, I get a backdrop. So for the backdrop, I got this backdrop. It was like, uh, I think it was like called snow or something. Snow. Uh, let me find it. So... You can, you can actually pick anything you want. Um, it was winter. Yeah, found it. Okay, so this one was the one I picked. But what I did was um, I deleted these trees. So it was just basically a hill, snowy hill. And I made a um, ground for it right here. So yeah, so that's what I did for the backdrop. Okay, so now let's start coding. Okay, when, when we start... We want to do, uh, get our one green flag clicked. Let's make it bigger. This is in the main character, by the way. So we're, we're going to be coding in the main character right now. So when green flag is clicked, we're going to set the size to 50. I'm pretty sure it is. But if yours is not, then you want to set to 50% because 100 is way too big. And then we're going to set the ghost effect of the main character to 100%. Because we will not be using it to show. But we don't want to hide it as well because then it would just like not be able to feel anything. We gotta make it ghost effect 100. And then in the beginning, let's make some uh, variables. So uh, we already have two variables right here. One is deviation, one is jumping. We'll need those later. We will not need them right now. So you can just ignore that for now. We're gonna make a new a variable called level. So this is for all sprites. Um, level. So this is just to track what level you're on. So in the beginning, of course, we want to set the level to 1. And then we're going to make a new custom block for resetting the player. So we're going to name it Reset Player. So this is just to reset the player position and all that. So um, just write Reset Player or whatever you want. Reset and then click OK. Okay. So now it's... So we want to reset him at X negative 200 y0 that's what i did and then we're gonna make another player so we're gonna put a g in front of all the global variables so we're gonna g is player dead so this is just a detect if the player is dead or not 
So is player dead? G velocity. We'll need these all of these um, variables later, but we'll not need them like right now. We're just gonna like reset them right here, and then we're gonna need G on ground. So this is to detect if it's on the ground. The code in this um, platformer is very similar to the Among Us platformer. So you can use the Among Us platformer for reference, and then G gravity. G gravity, and then we have jumping, which we already made. So anything that is um, like without the um, G in front of it is not global. So you want to make jumping as a um, for the sprite only. So we made jumping as a for the sprite only. So gotta make this as a for the sprite only. Okay, so next we want to reset all the variables. So let's set G is player dead to no. Because when the game starts, he's not dead. I'm going to set a lot of variables to zero. So G velocity to zero. Duplicate another one. Set G on ground to zero. And then set G gravity to negative one. The gravity is always going to be negative one. It's going to be going down by negative one every time. And then we're going to set the variable jumping to zero. Okay. And then right here in this with green flag clicked, after we set all this, we want to do reset player right here. And then we're going to broadcast a message. And then we're going to name it start game. Start game. And then we're going to broadcast another message called start new level. We'll need this later. Start new level so start new game and start new level so after you got start game and start new level let's work on the movement okay so for the movement we're gonna make a new block so let's make a block let's name it movement control uh, movement control okay so now we have our custom block oh yeah and also for the custom block don't forget to run f screen without refresh, so it will always constant will be a constantly updating. So you want to check that. Okay, so we have the custom block. Let's put that right here. Okay. All right now let's define it. So we're gonna do if go to control. Okay, let's drag the if then block into here, and then let's get an or. So we're gonna do if you can do with the right arrow or the. WASD, so if key right arrow or key WASD, uh, key D, which is for the right, is I uh, will set the variable G speed X. We're gonna make a new variable called G speed X, okay? It's for all sprites. Remember, all uh, sprites, uh, all variables with the G in front is for all sprites. So G speed X, we're going to set the G speed X right here, G speed X to seven. So the speed is going to be seven. You can make it any speed you want, but I preferred seven. So let's duplicate this, put that under here. And then when the left arrow is being pressed or a, then we're going to do G speed X to negative seven. So it's moving to the left. And then we're going to set. So this is like the little, um, what's it called? Friction. So the Griff Patches code, we have the friction. So we're gonna set the G speed X. G speed X. Uh, we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.8. G speed X multiplied by 0 0.8. So yeah. So let's go to operators. Get a multiplication symbol. Okay, multiply it by 0 0.8. And then we can get the G speed X. G speed X, put that in here. Okay, and then after that, we want to get an if-then statement. If. Um, actually, no. Let's do this later. We're going to have to make another custom block. So this is like to actual, actually move the player. So we're going to do another my block. So let's name it move player. player. And then we're going to make a new input. Let's name it speed x. So this is going to be the new input. Okay, so now you have to run it screen without refresh so it's always constantly updating okay so now we have this new custom block right here so let's define it right now let's okay so we're gonna 
go to, we're going to get to the go to, uh, change, uh, sorry, not go to, change x. So we want to change the x by speed x, and right here we're going to call the speed x right here. So if, uh, at, uh, in a greater than symbol, so if the absolute value of the g speed x, g speed x is greater than 0 0.9, then we're gonna move the player to the round of the speed x. So move the player. So we're gonna be calling this. That means it will change the x by the round of g speed x. So what this is just friction. So we're gonna round g speed x. Okay. Now let's try it out. Oh yeah. And before we start, we can't. We can't. This does not work yet. So first we need to code something else. So remember we broadcast a message. Start game. So we're gonna go events when I receive start game. We're gonna have to um <clears throat> get a show. <clears throat> and we're gonna get a repeat until. So we're gonna repeat until is player dead? Okay, so so if the player dead is equal to yes, G player is dead equals yes. So if it's dead, then we're gonna broadcast another message. We're gonna call it start all control. So we're gonna need this to activate all the control. Control. And then we're gonna broadcast two other messages we will not need right now. We'll need them in the future though, so just pay attention so you know you'll remember that you will need these uh, messages. So we're gonna check platform sorry. Platform detection. So check platform detection. Okay, and then we're gonna make one more. Uh, let's name this one check player position. So this is checking player position. Okay, so after this, um, we're gonna get one more thing. So we're gonna get a um, we're gonna get a, the start all control. So when I receive start all control, we're gonna call the movement control variable. So I mean not variable, custom block. Movement controls are here. Let's call that, so then it'll run this. Okay, so if you want this to show the character, you have to take out the ghost effect. So as you can see, when you play it, now the player can move around. As you can see, there's a bit friction as well. So yeah, this is the main character. You can add this set ghost effect back. So now we can make the, ma the animated character go to the actual, this thing animated character so I hope you have all of this done okay so once you're done with this we're gonna go to the animated character and then we're gonna get a one green flag clicked go to front layer let's make this bigger one green flag clicked go to front layer as the main animated character remember we're in the animated character sprite and then we're gonna get a forever loop forever forever and we're gonna make this go to the main character main and I'm gonna make sure this is don't root, uh, left and right. So remember to set this as rotation styles left to right, so then it will not flip upside down. Okay, so now let's get another one green flag clicked. When green flag is clicked, we're gonna get a forever loop. If the key right or D is being pressed, so key right, key right arrow or uh, D is being pressed, then we can point in direction of 90. And then we can just duplicate this. If key left arrow or A is being pressed, then we'll point in direction of negative 90. So it's facing the left. So as you can see now, let's play it. As you can see, this player, an animated character, went to the main character. And now when you move it, you can see um, the animated character is going to it and you can move it around. So yeah, I think that should be it for this tutorial. So this is gonna be the first part of the uh, Christmas Pokemon series. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment in the comment section below on what you want to see next. And thank you guys for watching. See you guys, bye.